Welcome back, folks, to Scripting for Linguists. In this episode, I have this question for us. How can I automate the extraction of vowel formants from an audio file with a corresponding text grid file? Now, just a refresher, vowel formants are the resonances of the vocal tract. And we can use those formants to plot in the mouth where a vowel is pronounced. F1, or formant 1, tells you the height in the mouth where it's pronounced, a vowel is pronounced, and F2, or formant 2, tells you the depth or how far back or front in the mouth a vowel is pronounced. For example, as we know, the vowel E is pronounced in a high front position, the vowel U in a high back position, A in a central low position, etc. And so I want to know how, I, how can I automate the extraction of those vowel formants. Now before I even jump into that, I just want to point out that our old friend Pratt the go-to acoustic software for linguists has a scripting language. And you can do this, you can extract vowel formants with the scripting language of Pratt. Now the purpose of this video is not to show that in Pratt. I'll leave a link to some of my scripts, uh, my Pratt scripts from the past, if you'd like to look at those. But the purpose of this video is to look at some new software called NewFave. NewFave is uh, software to do this very thing. What is new fave? It is a tool for automating and optimizing vowel form and extraction. It is philosophically similar and named after the fave suite. Okay. However, new fave has been completely written from scratch and has some key differences from the fave suite. Okay. There are some differences. I'll let you read that. This software is written by Joseph Fruwald. I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, Joe. Joseph. He's a linguist at the University of Kentucky. And um, thank you for making this available to the world. We're going to use this software to automate the extraction of vowel formats. Okay. So for that purpose, I have created a little Google Colab notebook. Here it is. And we are going to just kind of walk through it. Okay. So the first thing I'll point out is that at the time of making this demo, this recording, New fave requires one of Python 3.10, 3.11, or 3.12. If we just look at this page on the documentation, he says so, Joseph says so clearly. Currently, New fave supports Python versions 3.10, 3.11, 3.11, 3.12. Now you may wonder, what version of Python do I even have? If you don't have Python, how do I get it? Well, if you go to python.org, here I'm at python.org, right? And if you go to downloads, you'll see that the, the one that is suggested, the most current version, is 3.13.3, which will not work with new fave. So you have to go to all releases and look for a previous version. For example, um, 3.12.10 is right there. Let me zoom in quite a bit. 3.12.10, oops, let me zoom down this, scroll down this way and go like this. 3. 12.10 is right there. So you can get that one, or you can get 3.11.12 there would work, or 3.10.17, I guess, would work. So I've done that on my own hard drive. I have several installations of Python. I have the current version, 3.13. I have 3.12.9, I think, and 3.11 point something. And anyway, you can have several versions of Python on your own computer. But the cool thing about using a Google Colab notebook is that we're using Google's servers and their installation of Python. And their installation is 3.11.12. Okay, so we can use their installation. If you don't want to try to figure out how to install Python on your own computer and get it running, you can just use Google Colab. If you don't know what that is, let me just, if you just Google, Google Colab, there it is. It is a way to use Python and it's a virtual environment um, where you can do Linux, it's a Linux based system and so you can do Linux bash uh, or command uh, shell commands as well as run Python. So that's what I have here. I'll leave a link to this notebook in the in the description of this video for you if you like to look at it. Okay, so we have the right version of, of Python. Good. And then to install new fave, it's just a simple pip install. If you're familiar with Python, you know that pip install is, is um, a way to install modules in Python. It's kind of like CRAN in the R world, right? CRAN is the comprehensive R archive network. 
It's kind of the same thing where you have software that people put up, make available to the world. PIP is kind of the same thing. There's also Conda, another uh, software repository. But anyway, here we're going to pip install new fave. So pretty simple. In a, in a uh, Google Colab notebook, you put an exclamation point before any bash commands. That's what we're doing here. This is called a bash command. We're going to do exclamation point pip install new fave uh, with a dash between new and fave right there. Let me zoom in quite a bit more if we, so you can see it very clearly. Okay, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna shut that for a second. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I already did so. It took 35 seconds to download and install the software on this installation of this, this Google notebook here. Okay, and then um, I will point out, let's, let's back up over to, let's scroll over to Pratt. Back over in Pratt, so here is an audio file and a text grid file that has already been forced to align. I'm not sure what system was used here, whether it was uh, Montreal Forced Aligner, which is probably the, the most uh, common system or a really good system these days. Montreal Forced Aligner is kind of the successor to the Prozzi Lab Forced Aligner um, created at McGill University, if I'm not mistaken on that. Um, anyway, so here we have each phone. So here's the word hardly. Let's, let's listen. Hardly. That's not very loud. Hardly. So there's hardly. And we have each phone. Um, Delimited, already forced aligned by some previous step um, in the forced alignment with the forced alignment software. And what we have here are on tier one, down in the text grid area, we have the phones, that is the sounds on tier one. Tier two, we have the words. And then tier three has the whole utterance there. We need to pay attention to tiers one and tier two. So if you have phones on tier one and words on tier two, we need to do something a little bit special when we get to the point where we're actually trying to extract the, the vowels. Let me just jump back over to the internet and go over to, um, where do we want to go? We want to go to, yeah, let's look at this, this um, issue. So on the repository, someone asked, the, um, someone asked a question, um, I don't know this person, but they said, I have this problem, here's the error that I get, and I got that same error until I realized, oh, okay, there's a, there's a way these need to be organized, which I assume would be the case. So by default, new uh, fave expects, like Joseph says here, new fave expects output of MFA, Montreal Force Liner, which arranges tiers like this. Tier one is the word tier, and tier two is the phone tier. But fave align produced in the past phones on tier one and words on tier two. And then he says, you can tell new fave to process text grid with fave align with the fave aligned flag. And we'll look at that in a second. We'll sh I'll show you how to do that. That's what, that's what we need to do with the, uh, the text grid that I just showed you over in Pratt. That's the way it is. We have phones on, on tier one and words on tier two. And then it's not going to pay attention to tier three at all. Okay. So let's come back over here. Um, yeah, so after you download it, it's simple. It's a command line interface. He does point out, Joseph does point out that you can use this within Python if you want. And he gives an example here. This is Python code here. You can use it within a Python script, but he himself says um, it's, he, he kind of, it's easiest to use as a command line, right? We expect new fave to be primarily used as a command line tool. Cool, we'll use that as a command line tool. So anyway, that's what I do here. We have an exclamation point within a Google Colab notebook when we're doing a, a bash or a command line call. We have to use exclamation point. And then we have fave-extract space and then audio-text grid. So in this case, this function here says, here's one audio file, like a WAV file, and here's one text grid file already aligned, forced aligned, and it's just one. And then here's that flag I just we talked about a second ago. Two dashes, fave dash aligned. And this tells the function that the phones will be on tier one and the words will be on tier two. Uh, it expects it the other way around. So here is our, um, oh, I need to back up. Let's go jump over to the left-hand side of our screen and click on the files folder there, the bottom icon there. And um, we first need to upload our wave file as well as our text grid file right there 
I've already done so, but you would just upload your text grid file and your wave file. Right, so those two things right there is what I, well, not that one, this one there, those two. And well, it's gonna upload it again. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, so you need to upload those up to your file system um, on the notebook and good. And then, so that's what this is pointing out. These right here, this, this um, file name, those are the file names I just uploaded. utlab001.textgrid is, let me shut this down so we can look at more, here we go. So um, yeah, we have utlab001 underscore 16bit.wave. Let me open up the files real quick. There it is, right there. utlab001 underscore 16bit.wave. Good, and then utlab 001textgrid Now, when you're using, when you're just doing one, one um, sound file with this corresponding text grid, you can have different names. Like this has a different name. It has the the 16 uh, bit, the underscore 16 bit, whereas the text grid name doesn't have that. But that's all right when we're just using one um, pair there with this particular function, audio text grid. Okay. So that's it. That command right there does it. And when you run it, it took on this, uh, for me, it took 19 minutes right there. You can see that a little bit. 19 and 19 minutes to run. Um, this interview is about 33 minutes long. And again, it, it looks like this in Pratt. We have phones on tier one, words on tier two, and then the, the utterance down there. But the utterance is unimportant for what we're doing right now. 33 minutes long. Um, so, yeah. That's what it does. And well, the, the results after those 19 minutes or so, the results, it, it creates a newly, uh, creates a directory called fav underscore results, which should be in the file system of this notebook. Again, if I open up the file system um, right here with the icon, then I see that I have, yeah, right there, fav results. If I expand it down, there are five files in here four CSV files and one text grid file, okay? And you can look at the documentation here. He doesn't have much quite yet, but he's, he points out these are the five things that are saved. When you run this aligner, the formant point data, the formant track data, and then the DCT, which is just, um, discrete cosine transform parameters for the formant track data, as well as the log version of those. It's tracking, it kind of smooths out the, the track, the movement of the vowel in the mouth, and then a recoded text grid. Okay, that's what's saved out um, by that command line interface function. And good, so now within this Google Colab, we need to zip up that directory and create a zip file. I'll just call it the same name, fav underscore results dot zip, zipping up that directory. And when we do that, we end up with a, there it is, fav underscore results dot zip. And then finally, we can right click on the three vertical uh, dots right here and download this to our hard drive. Okay. And I've already done so before this video started, so I won't do so now. But then out on your hard drive, you can use whatever software you want to do whatever type of analysis you want. Right, for example, if you want to do a classic vowel plot with uh, format one, F1 on the y-axis and format two on the x-axis, inverted or reverse scales to get the position in the mouth, right? E is high front, U, high back, etc. cetera. So, um, yeah, so going back to the actual software that we're looking at uh, in this video, it's not hard to use. Like, you just need to make sure everything's set up correctly and then you just push go and it goes and creates cool output that you can use however you like in whatever software you are comfortable doing data analysis with. Now we'll point out, let's, let's jump back to our command right here. So the audio text grid command, again, is when you just have one sound file in its corresponding text grid. Let me just show you that. Let's go back to here. So yeah, uh, Joseph says, fav extract has three subcommands. The audio text grid is when you have a single audio file and it's forced to align text grid pair to process. 
the corpus command, the fav um, dash extract space corpus, is when you have all sorts of audio files and their corresponding forest aligned text grids in a single directory. Let's see if we can look at, yeah, this is the structure. So if you have a directory called, for example, my corpus and each and every sound file has a corresponding text grid file by the exact same name. He points this out right here. It has to be the exact same name. So jumping back to our script, that would not be the case here because we have underscore 16 bit. It works when we're just using, we have one pair like this, right? Using the audio dash text grid, but it would not have worked um, if we had tried the corpus command. Okay, so be aware of that. And then there's a, a third function called subcorpora that you can go down and find uh, paired text grids and wave files, wave files in um, subdirectories of the, the root directory that you're working on. So there's three kind of ways to use this tool. I just use the, the most simple one for this demo, audio dash text grid, which is a single pair. Okay, good. So there you have a demo of how to use this new software, new, new fave. Thank you so much, Joseph, for making this available to the world. And um, yeah, once again, the, the real kicker is just getting everything set up correctly. Again, I decided to use uh, Google Colab um, because it has the version of, one of the versions of Python that new fave needs. Again, you can, you can down um, grade or download a version of Python onto your hard drive that will work with it. For example, 312 something or 311 something or 310 something. The most current version, right, like I said, is, is 313. Uh, so that you can't just come here and download the, the most for, uh, current version. Okay, so there you go. I hope that was helpful. I, again, I'll leave a link to this, this uh, Colab notebook in um, the de description of this video. Thanks to Joey, my colleague, for the Wave and TechScript files for this demo. And thanks to Joseph for this great software. All right. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to, you know, give me a thumbs up, like. Those are the same thing, right? Yeah, okay, thumbs up or like. And, and subscribe, whatever, leave a comment. You know the drill. See ya.